Welcome to our review on filtration and crystallization. So the first thing we need to know are these five key terms that hopefully are familiar from key stage three. So a solution is a solute dissolved in the solvent. The solvent is the liquid that actually dissolves the solute. The solute is the solid that dissolves in the solvent. And then the last two are to do with the actual substance and its behavior. So a soluble substance is one that will dissolve whereas an insoluble substance is one that will not dissolve. So make sure that you do know those five terms, what they mean, and you're confident in using them, because they could very well occur in the questions associated with this topic. And if you don't know their meanings, you're not going to be able to answer any of the questions. If we consider dissolving, first of all, when a substance dissolves, what's actually happening is the particles of the solute are separating and they become completely mixed with the particles of the solvent. And that's what you can see in the diagram there. The little red and white molecules, those are water, and you can see they're completely surrounding the green and the blue ones, which are the particles of our solute. So they're being pulled away from the main mass and then surrounded by the solvent. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that not all solvents will dissolve all substances. So the most common one to think about here is nail varnish. So nail varnish will not dissolve in water. In order to dissolve that, you need nail varnish remover. So just remember that not everything is going to dissolve in things like water. Sometimes you need a different solvent. So the next process we're going to look at then is the process of filtration. So this is our first separating technique. Now, if you get a question asking you how to separate different things, Filtration is what we're going to use to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid. And the way that it actually works is that we're going to use a piece of filter paper placed inside a funnel, as you can see in the diagram on the right there. That then sits in something like a conical flask. And what happens is, as you pour your mixture into the top, then the actual solid, that insoluble solid, is going to collect in the filter paper, and that's our residue. And then all of the liquid is going to go straight through the filter paper and collect in the bottom of our conical flask. And that's the filtrate. So the reason that this is actually able to work is that the filter paper has these absolutely tiny microscopic holes in it. Now, those holes are actually small enough to stop the solid particles going through, but large enough to allow the tiny liquid particles to pass through. So that's why we can use this as a separating technique for an insoluble solid and a liquid, because the solid will remain in the filter paper as the residue, whereas the liquid will go straight through and become the filtrate. Now, one thing that hopefully you were taught to do when you did this experiment in class is how to fold the filter paper properly. And this is in a process called fluting it. So as opposed to just folding it in half, folding it in half again, and then just sticking it in, this time you should actually be folding it to make that little fluted appearance, as you can see in the diagram towards the bottom right. Now, the reason behind doing it this way is that you get a much larger surface area for the filtrate to pass through. Therefore, it makes it an awful lot quicker than if you've literally folded it in half a couple of times. And as you know, if you've done it that way, you're sitting there staring at water drip through very slowly. So always flute it to increase the surface area and therefore make this happen quicker. The second separating technique we can use is crystallization. Now we use crystallization to separate a dissolved substance from the solution. So the equipment that we need to do this is on the right hand side there in the diagram. So you've got an evaporating basin, which then contains our solution. And that's set above a beaker with some water in there. And we put that above the Bunsen burner. Now, we actually need this to be set up in this fashion rather than just heating the evaporating basin directly with the Bunsen burner, because for crystallization to happen properly, you need the solution to be heated gently until it becomes saturated. And heating directly with a Bunsen burner, that's not a gentle heating. So you set it above water and then it acts like a little water bath and gently heats our solution. When we refer to a saturated solution, we're referring to one that has no more ability to dissolve the solute. So basically what we find is that when we make it saturated, then we start to form crystals. So that as we then start to cool the solution down, 
the solubility of our solute decreases and then we get even more crystals coming out. So what we have to do is you heat it over your little water bath until you start to see those crystals form. Then you turn off your Bunsen burner and then as it cools down, you'll find more and more crystals will form because as that solution cools, the solubility of our solute will decrease. So when we've actually got all these crystals and a little bit of solution left kicking around in our evaporating basin, all you need to do to separate those crystals is you filter it. You can then just dry them in a warm oven or just even just pat them with a piece of filter paper and then you're left with just the crystals of our what was solute beforehand. Hopefully at the end of this video you now know those key terms solution, solvent, solute, soluble and insoluble. You can describe what happens when something dissolves and you can also explain when we'd use filtration and when we'd use crystallization along with naming the pieces of equipment that are involved.